Hello, I am Uchiha and welcome to Music Theory in 5 minutes. Today we're going to talk about a technique that is used a lot in cinematic music, a type of chord change that brings a good sense of mystery, either uplifting or dark sounding. It's been used a lot by John Williams, Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmer and others. Today we are talking about the chromatic mediant. We've seen that in a scale, every chord made from each note of the scale represents a degree, and we often call the fifth degree the dominant. Well, in fact, each degree of the scale have a name of that type, and that name can either describe the note itself or the chord in the scale. The first degree of the scale is the tonic, the fifth one is the dominant, and the fourth one is the subdominant. Then the second degree is called the supertonic, and the seventh degree is either the subtonic, if it's a whole tone below the tonic, like in a natural minor scale, or it's the leading tone, if it's a semitone below the tonic, like in the major scale, for example. Then the third degree is called the mediant, and the sixth degree is the submediant. And it's this mediant that the chromatic mediant term is referring to. The principle to compose with this is that from any chord that is either major or minor, you can go to any chord that is a third away. So from a C major chord, for example, you can go up or down a major third, which is two tone, and this will bring us to E or A flat, or you can go up or down a minor third, which is one tone and a half, and that brings us to E flat or A. Then any of these chords can be either a major chord or a minor chord, so that gives us eight different possibilities. Now, let's take a closer look and see how these chords are made and see how much they share with our C major chord. I will mark in red the notes that are also in the C major chord. We can see two of them have two notes in common with the C major chord. That's the chords E minor and A minor. These chords are called diatonic to C major, which means they can already be found in the C major scale, so they will sound easy in the ear and won't bring any particular attention. Things get interesting with the chords that share only one note with the C major. These are the E major, the E flat major, the A major and the A flat major. These are the chords that are called the chromatic mediants. Each bring a particular color and all are particularly tasteful. One way to interpret that with classic theory is that it utilizes parallel scales. E major and A major are the parallel majors of E minor and A minor, which are already in the scale of C major. And E flat major and A flat major are from the scale of C minor, which is the parallel minor scale of C major. Then we have chords that have no tones in common with C major. These are the E flat minor and the A flat minor. They are called doubly chromatic medians and can sound a lot more dissonant, so they can be less easy to use, but they can also be very colorful nonetheless. Now, let's see how a chromatic median sound from a minor tonality. Let's start from A minor. That can lead us to a C sharp major, a C sharp minor, a C major, a C minor, a F sharp major, a F sharp minor, a F major or a F minor. Here, the diatonic chords would be the C major and the F major. The chromatic medians are the C minor, the C sharp minor, the F sharp minor and the F minor. And the doubly chromatic medians are the F sharp major or the C sharp major. So that's a lot of options and most of them sound really cool, but here are a couple more tips on how to use them. A chromatic mediant is generally used starting from the first degree of your scale. It can be used as a borrowing to then come back to your first chord, or it can be also used for modulation. The chromatic mediant is then to consider as the first degree of your new scale. A lot of composers use only two chords and build a whole song going back and forth between the two. So if you like the feeling given by the change between two chords, it can help really highlight this feeling to stay only on those two chords. In a more experimental way, you can also create a chord progression where every transition is made with a chromatic mediant. This way, you won't really have a tonal center, or rather, the tonal center will shift constantly.
term of melody, the safe way would be to use only the notes from the chords that support it. So when you play a C minor, the melody can be an arpeggio of a C minor. Or you can consider each chord as the first degree of its own tonality. So when you play a C minor, you can use the scale of C minor or any other scale where the first degree is a C minor. Now to finish the video, let's experiment with all that. I'll make a chord progression using only chromatic medians. I will start with the A minor chord, then go up a major third to C sharp minor, then I'll go up a minor third to a E minor, and then down a major third to a C minor chord. From there, I can go down a minor third to fall back on an A minor chord. Here I chose to go only with minor chords because I like the eerie tone it had, but of course they don't all need to be minor chords. Then for the melody, I simply took a couple of notes, one highlighting the common notes between each chord, and the other moving by semitone every time. So it could help pivot from one chord to the next while underlining the mysterious feel I was going for. and then nothing prevents me from making all these chords major at some point to brighten this up. And that will be all for today, so thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all next time.